ICA GEM7 is the guideline that established the risk assessment for mutagenic impurities in drug products to limit the potential for carcinogenic risk. The presence of mutagenic impurities is expected in any route of synthesis because we need reactive compounds to synthesize the API with good yields. Usually, these same compounds, which are reactive in the synthesis, can also be reactive with the DNA, causing mutations which can lead to cancer. However, this is only a problem above certain levels, so if the amounts are too low, below the level considered acceptable, the risk caused by the impurities is negligible, hence they are not of concern. This is why we do the risk assessment, to understand in which levels are impurities found and if those levels are above or below the safe limit. The risk assessment consists of four stages. Identifying the mutagenic impurities. ICHM7 recommends the use of in silico tools for predicting the mutagenic potential, as long as two complementary systems are used one expert-based and one statistical-based. Establishing safe limits. The limit for mutagenic impurities is based on the TTC in case the carcinogenic potential is unknown or on the TD50 derived from the carcinogenicity study if available. Exposure evaluation. In this stage, the level of the impurity in the API must be determined to understand how much exposure the patient will have to that impurity. This can be done by using analytical methods or through understanding of the manufacturing process of the API and its capacity to eliminate the impurity, which we call purge factor. The purge factor can also be calculated using in silico tools. Risk characterization. Here is where we compare the results obtained with the safe limits, which will finally indicate whether there is a risk or not. After concluding the risk assessment, ICHM7 states that a control strategy must be defined for each potentially mutagenic impurity. There are four options of control strategies, which depend on the stage where you would like to control the impurity. Option 1. Controlling the mutagenic impurity in the API specification. This is recommended especially when the impurity is generated late in the process and there is no possibility of establishing a control in an intermediate stage or a safe purge factor. However, when impurities arise from earlier stages, this would not be the best option because we would only find out if the impurity is below the limit or not when we already have our final API. When absence has been shown in consecutive batches, it may be appropriate to establish periodic testing rather than routine testing. Option 2. Controlling the mutagenic impurity in an intermediate specification with the same limit that is acceptable for this impurity in the API. This situation can be applied when the impurity is generated before a certain intermediate of the process and there is no possibility of its formation after that intermediate. Then it would be appropriate to include a test for the control of the impurity in the intermediate specification. Option 3. Controlling the mutagenic impurity in an intermediate specification with a limit higher than the acceptable limit in the API. This case is similar to option 2, however the limit for the impurity in the intermediate stage can be established as higher than the permitted limit in the API, as long as it is guaranteed that the stages separating that intermediate from the API will be able to purge and eliminate the impurity to levels well below the acceptable limit. This can be shown through the purge factor calculation or spike and purge studies. Option 4. By using this option, no control in routine is needed, neither in the API nor in the intermediate, 
it ensures that the impurity will be adequately removed from the process by calculation of a purge factor, which can be supported by spike and purge studies. This is the option that gives the best assurance of compliance for all batches, because it is based on scientific knowledge about the manufacturing process. By knowing properties of the impurity, such as reactivity, solubility, and volatility, and stages of the process where these properties are able to separate the impurity from the API, the purge factor can be calculated. In our next video, we will show an example of how to calculate the purge factor. Finally, once the best control strategy has been defined, the mutagenic impurities are controlled, the API is considered to be safe and compliance to ICHM7 is established.